insects and other organisms go through a metamorphosis and there's you know there's a complete or an incomplete but a lot of kids will remember the butterfly metamorphosis and how that's a cycle you can start anywhere on the cycle and those most of what the invertebrates in the stream are also insects and this is the larval stage and so reminding them that this is just one stage of their life cycle and they perform different roles depending on where they are because part of their life is in here and they're being fish food and then they might hatch and become bird food and <laughs> do different things there's some some insects like mayflies that spend most of their life cycle is as an inverter as as a aquatic they actually often adults will have no functioning mouth parts so they just only reproduce and be they only come to the air to reproduce um they're that's why they call them ephemeroptera they're ephemeral they're very short-lived as an adult in the air um you know we do have different cards that have different features um you know examples of what bugs look like we have the little nets although i, I can also say that you know the kids usually don't really catch much in them but it's kind of more of a way to keep them distracted <laughs> uh, we have a lot of little tools if you want to get you know if you're finding a lot of macro invertebrates attached to rocks you can you know certainly dislodge them using a lot so it's all just an exercise in you know getting the kids in the water getting the kids to try to find the macro invertebrates, identify them. And again, once they find one or two cool ones, like the crayfish probably would have been enough for this. You know, if in a typical class, they would have been stoked. And then you can keep that for the next class and say, hey, can you find more? Or, you know, it's really cool seeing like the dragonfly larvae over here. And if there is any moving and deeper water or a channel, definitely have, one, definitely have an adult on the downstream just watching kids and making sure hey you're too close to the deep water get back you know because mm -hmm. they will get distracted and start wandering around and uh it helps if you really tightly monitor how many i usually do pairs of kids with a net so there's usually no more than three pairs of kids in the water at once and that's a little easier to monitor if you get more kids in the water it's just too hectic Um, something that is pollution tolerant can also live in clean water because there's this like assumption that if you find something that is pollution tolerant that means you're you have polluted water but that's not necessarily the case um, it's only the pollution sensitive ones that can be a, like a single species indicator if you have a pollution tolerant species then you don't you don't actually know anything about it quality of your water. Cut up. Can we talk to yeah, can we talk oh, yeah. to Bucky? Can you can we hear her? Uh no. Okay. She's waving. Uh, <laughs> wait, she, wait, she, wait. she can she can wait. type. Yeah there are some there are some leeches or flatworms in here. Oh and one of those little red I don't know what they're called around oh, here the, but that the red red worm. <laughs> So Bucky says it often works well to have oops, to have uh, part of the students look under rock. I've seen a lot of macroinvertebrates which are food for salmon while they're in the stream. Um, that's a good thing. I mean, and that's what that's the role they're playing in terms of the salmon.
and also when you've got higher, more sensitive, you, you know that you're going to have better water quality if you have the more sensitive invertebrates present. Have the, you know, you know, address the question of the tolerance insects, the sensitivity, just a little bit reinforcing that concept. Um, again, try not to keep the, the macroinvertebrates out of water for too long. And again, I usually keep one or two that are particularly interesting and just let the kids explore. And again, the more you, the more you dig, the more you find, the more you watch, it's, I think it's pretty neat, but it kind of, It depends on what the macroinvertebrate is and how fresh the water is. It can't get too hot and obviously mm -hmm. need oxygen. So you, if you do keep it, what you want to do is keep replenishing the water mm -hmm. and keep it as cold as possible. She says, uh, before you collect, ask students for her, their hypotheses of what they might find. Like, do you think you're going to find more sensitive or less sensitive here? And especially good if they've already like been to the water quality station, they know what quality is, they can discuss, well, we found it was cold water and it had a lot of oxygen. Well, those were indicators of, of better water quality. Um, if they were to find that it was warm water, not so much oxygen, they might think, you know, hope, hopefully, maybe these are, you won't find those sensitive to, to poor water quality macroinvertebrates. So, but, 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 but even, yeah. even in the different environments, I think even you know, like at McGregor where there's a really, where we collect macroinvertebrates, it's a really fast ripple. But if you get out, if you dig closer to the edge you know, where the water's slower, you're more likely to find, you know, worms and things along those lines as opposed to if you're out in the ripple, you're going to find more mayflies. So even sending students out to a little bit different sections to see what they find. And again, here's a great spot where they could characterize Lazy Creek versus Bear Creek because right now we found basically nothing in Bear Creek. Well, I'm sure if we look harder, probably got up into some of the riffles, we'd find some similar bugs, but Lazy Creek has, you know, a great spot. So again, just, just interesting to compare, contrast, get dirty, get wet. Do we have thermometers in this kit? Like if we did want to do a little comparison, like why do we think that is? Let's go take the temperature or no? We don't, but we okay. can put them in. I mean, okay. we have like 15 thermometers in the water quality kit. It would be fun if you make a giant Venn diagram on the ground and place the, like if you're doing a comparison, place the big posters of each species that you found in like Bear Creek, Lake Creek, and Wolf. Hmm. And we have done that, like use the big posters for, you know, as we find things like, okay, well the last class found those two, let's see if we can find more. Nice. And then we we have two kits. We only have one set of the big posters. The other kit has, I think, uh, has a smaller set of the posters. And we don't have everything, but we do have a bunch of what you, you know, some things we commonly find. And again, they're great teaching tools. Like once we find the larval cases, you know, they start talking about caddisflies. A lot of times we don't always. Sometimes we find the caddisfly in the cases. Sometimes we find it out. Sometimes just the cases. So it's again, they're great teaching tools. A stonefly, mayfly. Can anybody tell me, you know, is the water either what the water temperature is or is it too hot or too cold for fish? Depending on, you know, just snippets. Can anybody name the species of fish that's found? And then at the end, we reinforce that as well. Goes back to the quiz, you know, some of the things that we teach there. But again, just those little, those little snippets. And this one is great once you start finding bugs and um, kids, kids will remember that. Based on that, you know, in theory, right now the water temperature, at least when we took it, was okay for fish, but getting close to that level. Right? And during the morning, though, I'm sure, especially because it's shallow, it's going to warm up probably eight degrees by four o'clock this afternoon. And based on the, you know, what, since you know, Francis and I have a lot of experience in Bear Creek and do a lot of monitoring, you know, it's especially this time of year, it's kind of marginal fish habitat, so. You know, we would tend to find more, you know, to, you know, tolerant or somewhat tolerant bugs. So it's not surprising that we find the worms and the crayfish and the, the uh, scuds. Um, you know, water quality soon will get too hot. Dissolved oxygen of five is very, you know, extremely low. You know, danger level for fish are usually like somewhere above eight at the very least. I think that's where the standards are. Um, 
pH is probably fine. Uh, measure pH. And then compare and contrast. So 